Yeah, yeah. You can share your screen or whatever it is. Okay, good afternoon, uh, everyone. So welcome to the second session of the event study uh, methodology. So today uh, I'm going to walk you through the methodology in a very simplistic way with a very basic uh, conducting an event study analysis for just one stock. And then, you know, you can extend it for as many as talks you want as a part of your sample study. But this is the step which is important for uh, for the event study because the basic regression has to be run on every form level or every uh, you know level of the unit that you are considering. So as I covered in the last session that the the application of the event study methodology is mostly in the corporate finance and finance literature compared to the economics as such because the availability of the information and the adjustment of the information into the stock prices is a phenomenon and the characteristic of the financial markets so this study is applicable when you have you know the new information coming in and you know that information is unanticipated for the investors who are trading in the market so who are going to react to that information so you need to have that kind of a setup so somebody has to react to the news and that should that should ultimately affect essentially the the, um, the moment in the stock price okay so that's called stock price reaction so it could be overreaction underreaction whatever you want to capture so um, that will be essentially just a minute Sorry about. Sorry about. So essentially, the overreaction and underreaction to will be observed for a short interval of time, and you we will see that that time interval varies from. Uh, form to form and the nature of information as well. So these are the essentially the factors. So sometimes the uh, the information takes a longer time to get adjusted in terms of the new prices. Sometimes it is more instantaneous. So depending on uh, the reaction, so one way to uh, kind of understand the events today is what kind of reaction do you see with respect to the particular information? Right? So what we do with respect to one form. You can easily extend it with respect to a sample of forms. Okay, so everything in a sample of forms is essentially in terms of the average of normal return, cumulative average of normal returns, and stuff like that. So everything gets averaged over the forms and the t statistics and other non-parameter statistics. All the tests uh, will be conducted accordingly. So that's the only difference um, that whether you are applying the test of significance for essentially an independent uh, uh, every every form specific abnormal return and cumulative abnormal return or for the overall sample. If you want to make inference, then you have to essentially translate these parameters to the form to the sample level. So that's the only difference and all those formulas are covered in the last session. So you can easily apply those. So I'm going to do it for one stock just to show you how to do it. And I have kind of, you know, uh, prepared uh, an exercise for you um, in simple Excel. OK, because not and, and the same thing you will be able to do much faster if you use a um, kind of software like SAS or Stata or R for that matter. But here we will essentially go step by step. Okay. So let me just uh, open it up. Yeah. And Okay, if I'm sharing a window, why I have just a minute, just give me a moment. I um, I can't yes. see my file, which I want to share. Let me try again. Okay. Yeah, okay, now I see. Okay. Can you can you see 
the Excel file? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We can see that. Okay, wonderful. So you see, um, let me give you give give a background. So this is a very basic data, and uh, uh, what what this stock um uh, is in in picture is essentially yes the bank, and all of us know what for uh, last few years of time, right? And more recently from two thousand nineteen, so yes bank has been in the uh, in the news uh, quite lately for its. Uh, engagement into you know the evergreening practices with um, the lenders um, uh, with the borrowers whom they they favored and like the recent arrest of um, avanta groups um, promoter essentially uh, who is uh, gautam thapar so that was also uh, in relationship um, to the yes bank because uh, they were favored uh, in terms of uh, providing and sanctioning loan from the yes bank okay and they ultimately misused those loans so but the focus here is essentially yes bank okay who is essentially issuing the loan so i have what i've done is you know i'm going to um, focus on a particular announcement and come to that shortly so just to give you an idea so i have downloaded essentially the uh, the stock price um stock prices for yes bank from cmi provis okay so standard data source for stock prices that we use in finance so my dates are essentially 1st march 19 uh, 2019 to essentially 31st march 2020 okay so i'm just kind of nearly one year of data i'm just focusing on right so i have downloaded essentially the stock prices for yes bank so that is indicated in column b and these are all adjusted closing price okay so usually uh, in finance we we take the adjusted closing price which is adjusted for all the dividend payments or stock split whatever it is so the price is already adjusted for that so we don't really go for you know high low is not usually um, uh, considered because if you consider high price or low price or opening price or close or, or you know the just the closing price then it is essentially you know it it has an effect of the volatility which may not be observed so sometimes you know when the market opens the uh, the prices are essentially highly volatile so to avoid all those things we kind of you know take the adjusted closing price okay so that's a standard practice in the uh, in the empirical finance now for the same days remember that we also need uh, to if we are using the market model to estimate the abnormal return and then we also need the uh, market right in which this particular stock is being traded so for this i have selected um, the market which is essentially the um, nifty 50 Okay. Now I can select uh, the Sensex also here, but I've just kind of selected the Nifty Fifty just for the essentially uh, presentation of this session. Okay. So you can easily change it and work around it. So that's not a problem because uh, Yes Bank was uh, uh, is 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 listed on both Bombay Stock Exchange and National Stock Exchange. So I have taken Nifty Fifty index values on the same trading days. um with respect to the yes bank trading okay so now here is one key that we have to understand that um the event study is based upon the trading days not on the calendar days okay so whenever there is a trading that is considered as one day okay so i have to be sure that these dates are exactly matching okay so you have to run a basic test i have kind of run a basic test to uh, find out if there are gaps in the trading with respect to the yes bank and then i need to address those okay so one way to address is in my data the yes bank is a highly liquid stock so you will see that there is no gap in the trading for or yes bank okay but you could have in your sample the firms which are infrequently traded okay so when you define the market market data is available on every trading day so with respect to that trading day you can easily identify the gaps 
Now, one way to address the infrequent trading in event study analysis is account for essentially that infrequent trading. Okay, and there is a seminal paper by Dibson in 1979 who gives a way to kind of adjust for the non-synchronous trading or infrequent trading with respect to the stocks where the infrequent trading is happening. So in, if your sample is suffering from infrequent trading, then you have to adjust the stock prices. And it's a very simple adjustment in terms of the, um, the volatility, because what will affect if there is no continuous trading is essentially the volatility of the stock. Okay, so the adjustment is in terms of the volatility in the form of a simple, um, you know, simple, instead of running a OLS, you will, uh, run essentially WLS, okay, so to account for that, but you can see that, but th that's kind of, you know, these are all variations that you can uh, uh, specific to the sample design, okay, in in my sample today, uh, we do not uh, have uh, the problem of infrequent trading, right, now, this for the, you know, uh, for uh, the sake of uh, understanding how the stock prices have uh, moved over a period of time for Yes Bank, I've just plotted it. And you can see that, um, you know, and it's a Yes Bank, so it has a classic, you know, it is a fall from when the Yes Bank um, picked up quite nicely when it started um, being a private bank it uh, its performance was outstanding right uh, but uh, with the lot of issues it started facing um since uh, to, between 2014 and 19 uh, and there were uh, uh, governance issues mostly and uh, the the bank suffered a, a significant price fall now we are not conducting the event study because we want to understand the the fall in the price now this could be natural this could be perfectly all right in the stock market because these are like this, this just indicates that the the valuation of the firm or the uh, here the security is essentially adjusting according to the um, its true value so price fall is absolutely fine but event study allows us to essentially look at the investor reaction or the market reaction in general with respect to a particular announcement that is significant effect on its stock price or overall valuation, right? So it, if there is an announcement which might affect the firm structurally, then we want to consider that, right? Because going forward, that would bring a significant changes, right? So not, not, not just a valuation that is, you know, driven because of the poor performance, right? So that is okay in the market, but that when the sudden information comes to which the investors are likely to react, that is the event um, that is considered as an event. Okay, so identification of event is absolutely um, uh, you have to be uh, very careful about the choice of the event that you consider. Now, the other point uh, that I want to tell you is, um, as you can see, that you know if this this price fall you know is kind of it's falling significantly so there is no there's no um, sudden um, jumps in terms of you know price again reaching nearly uh, 300 and then coming down it's not like that so it has kind of you know been steady in terms of its fall so by focusing on this time period is kind of okay because you know it is reaching towards some equilibrium which is a new equilibrium so we can essentially you know within this range um, we can essentially kind of find out uh, the investor reaction to uh, the significant announcements. Now for um, demonstration of event study, what I've selected is my announcement is happening on uh, essentially, there were a lot of announcements, but uh, I have kind of, you know, uh, I have not stick to those announcements. They were mainly in 2019, so I've kept it out. But I am focusing on a very uh, quite recent announcement, which was on 13th March 2020. On 13th March 2020, uh, there was a notification uh, by the Bombay Stock Exchange that Yes Bank will be removed from 
from all the BSE indices. Okay. Now, because it had a very high market cap and it was representing a good form and a liquid form, Yes Bank was included in the major BSE indices. Okay. So, 13th March was the day when it was announced by the stock exchange that it will be removed. Now, the stock addition and removal from the indices is a big announcement, right? So it is it 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 gives a it's a it gives a very big information to the investor uh, about a lot of things, right? Why a stock that is if you study the literature about why a, why a stock gets included in an index based on you know continuous trading and pre pretty much it because it the index represent the market right so the stock which is highly volatile and which has lots of governance issue structural problem they are mostly not included so these you can replicate this same study for the announcement when the yes bank was included in the major indices as well so you can see that you know what happens at that time so stock inclusion and exclusion they're they're pretty common uh set of announcement uh, for the event study literature okay so we are considering on this date okay now naturally you see that the price actually you know from 25 it uh it was uh it rose to 25.55 and then it started you know increasing and then decreasing but that's not the point what we want to see is essentially you know whether the market reacted to it so whether any change in the price was abnormal okay or was it normal okay so whether it was the abnormal return was significantly different from zero or not right so if it is significantly different from zero then market is either overreacting or underreacting right so depending on the sign of the abnormal return now why this is uh, essentially uh, important is in a larger context is because if you if you use that value and uh, multiply it with the uh, with the, essentially the number of shares and overall value will tell you that how much value was lost with respect to that stock and how much value was lost from the market if there is a sudden negative reaction or how much value was created in the market for even if it is a short run how much value was created for this with this with respect to this information so basically you know investors by reacting to that information becomes either they become wealthy or they become poor right and it's a value loss or value gain to the market as well so the shareholder wealth implication is one of the reasons that people look at the event study analysis so uh, you can actually look at the economic value of it and then have the interpretation okay so far so good any questions at this point in time No questions. Okay. Ma'am, just one query. Hmm. Uh, do we need to keep equal number of observations for this cutoff point? Like whenever we are defining that this was a major, uh, this was a day on which this event has happened. So do we need to keep equal observations before that and after that? Did you attend the last session? Uh, Ma'am, uh, there were connectivity issues, so I was not able to follow everything. Yes. yes. So that is the um, that is the issue here. So there is nothing like equal observation all you have to define is define an event window and estimation window that i'm coming to so there is there is not such thing actually in the event study okay 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 thank you yeah so it depends on how many how how many days after the event it all to look at so it all depends on that now preparing the data okay so this sheet is essentially so i come to the data sheet where i have prepared the data and now you see that I have the dates, I have the Yes Bank closing prices, Nifty closing, and then from the column D, I am essentially calculating the returns. Now, these are the prices, right? Now, I, first thing I have to calculate is the return, both stock return as well as the market return, okay? Then in column F, I am defining, essentially, I'm just indicating the days prior to the event. Why I am doing that? Because I want to, I, I know that I have to define the estimation window, which has to be minimum 150 or 120 to 150 days 
and i have to you know i i want to see how many days in uh, before the event i can go up to right so this is essentially just an indicator and then for based on that i will decide whether these days of observations are included in the estimation window or not okay now that is the first part of the answer to your question mr prashant sharma right so that is essentially the first step that with respect to the event we will define the estimation window and just to maintain the law of large numbers and you know we don't want to get into the problem of small sample and all after all these are stock prices you can go as much as uh, possible in the time but make sure that you don't go so much backwards that there are other events who which start coming into you know affecting it so we don't want to do that so 120 days are good enough okay so max you can go up to 150 days you can play around with all those things right so what i do is essentially i so first first things first so what is this return these are all log returns okay straight away log of ratio of essentially today's price divided by yesterday's price okay similarly the market return so no issues here then i come to my announcement date which is essentially this 13th march right so i'm just going to right now what do i do i have marked it as zero because this is my event window right now I can essentially, you know, for just to eyeball the data, you can actually plot it with respect to the days prior to the event and you can see, but that is not meaningful because, you know, just plotting the prices is not that meaningful. It will tell you that, okay, how the, what's the trend in the stock price, but what we are interested into is the plotting of essentially the abnormal return, how quickly it is coming back to normal or the equilibrium situation, whatever the new equilibrium. So this is essentially my event day, which is zero. Now from any days before the event are all, you know, are I have to decide from there the estimation day, the days in the estimation window. And after that, I have all these positive days. Okay, so these are all the after event, it will form my event window. Okay, it will form a part of my event window. I'll come to that. Okay, now. How do I include the observations in my estimation window? So what I've done is, you know, typically that event window is you want to see the effect of that e event, you know, plus minus the day of the event, of course, then plus minus one day, plus minus two days, plus minus three days, five days, up to five or up to 10 days. Usually we see the effect 10 days around the event. So you leave 10 days. Okay, so after 10 days before the event, you start the estimation window. Okay, so you see that on the 10th day observation before the event, I have kept as it is not included in the estimation window. Why? Because this is also, you know, I want to, I want to consider it as a part of event window. So there should not be any overlapping. I cannot estimate the normal performance based on um, which is the the time period which is which is which could be afflicted by by the event itself right so we don't want to take it and usually what we do is you know just uh, you know to be on the safer side leave two three more days and then also you can start your estimation window okay so that's fine you can play around with it and then see how it is affecting okay so what i've done is that I want to consider max up to 10 days and then I want to start my estimation window. Okay, so from minus 11, I have the estimation window and I want say, you know, 120 days of observation, right? So I go up to essentially minus 130, right? So minus 130 plus 10 is minus 120, right? So 120 days of observations from the 10 days prior to the event okay that forms my estimation window okay so i say up to yes here i can go i here this is 150 days okay so i've increased the yes i just to show you that you know you can increase otherwise you can have just the 
120 days also. So now this is more days. So let me just reduce it to. Say 120 days, okay? Rest of the things I don't want. But they are there, but we, we don't want to use. Now, one thing is, you know, you should always, kind of, you know, if you are sure that there is no other event around this time, then you can increase your estimation window from, you know, 120 days to, say, you know, 150 days, okay? Let's say, whatever, one, one, 10 more days we add. Okay, so let one thirty days, just you select. Okay, so that is essentially. So I know that this form. So I'm just going to highlight that this forms my estimation window. So what I do is I just kind of highlight it so that when you are picking up on this, you can because of the highlight you can pick up very quickly. Okay, so far so good. Now, so for the event study, now I have the next worksheet where I'm preparing for the event study and I will have all my results over there. So what I do is essentially, you know, prepare kind of a, a format, okay, for the collection of all the things that I need. So the first thing that I need is essentially the to describe the event, right? So uh, this is essentially the event window. Okay, so T is my essentially indicates the pointer for event window. So I have kept the event window maximum length of the event window is from minus 10 to plus 10. Okay, so 10 days prior to the event and this after the event. Okay, now that's a standard practice. You don't really want to go uh, much higher because that then it doesn't make sense. Because that, then it's not instantaneous reaction, right? It's like something else is playing a role, okay? Because then people, uh, even the management will start uh, making certain changes with respect to, you know, the new announcement. And then it will try to, you know, make positive changes so that the form valuation gets better. So all that adds up in terms of the time. So we don't really um, go beyond 10 days uh, in the event study analysis, okay? Now, so I just kind of have, you know, the, the date up to 10 days prior and 10 days after the event. Then column B is essentially formed. So there's a basic data because there's a presentation, right? So this comes from a sheet which is titled as event data, okay? Now here you can list all the sample forms and their respective markets, okay, for the presentation of your analysis okay so all i say is equal to i go to the basic data sheet and i say okay this is my form okay now what is the market reference i know i have listed again i go to event data and i say this is my market reference nifty okay estimation window length and i have kind of you know put it already there i say okay i say 150 days then i say 150 now we have changed it to 130 i will put 130 Okay, so you'll see that 130 days, right? Pointer to the end of estimation window. What is this? That is essentially when I stop. So that is, again, I have listed it as 10. So I stop, you know, before the 10th day. That's it. Now I end of the event window. That is same as essentially the 10 days, right? So I can say that I can just say 10. Okay, this is the date. So I will just copy from here. So this is the format. Okay, this is the this is the date of the, okay, sorry. So this is essentially when does my event uh, window ends? It is, it is essentially the, the, the 10th day. So I want to convert, I don't want the date, I want the, length of event window okay and i say maximum length so just for the record i say maximum is 10 and i just say that okay i want the, this format okay it's just a number just for the reference okay now what do we need to do is essentially we need to estimate the abnormal return okay so i should have my intercept alpha beta 
then I should have for the essentially, so this, this is root mean square error, right? Which is essentially the, um, uh, for the, for the test statistics, right? Then I have the observed return. Using observed return, I will calculate the abnormal return, which is essentially the difference between observed return and estimated return, okay? So first things first. Now go back to the data, okay? Here we will essentially estimate the market model, okay? And that market model is a simple OLS regression, which is a form level. So for every form, we need to have the abnormal return, okay? Now in this event study, we have only one form. So we will essentially run the regression. So in Excel, simple way to run the regression is go to data, go to data analysis, and it's a simple OLS regression, nothing fancy about it. Okay, so input Y range is essentially the form returns, right? Over the estimation window. That's why I highlighted so I can easily pick it up. All my yellow highlights. Okay. Then input X range is market. Index again, I just focus on my highlighted portion. Okay. So then I don't want constant to be zero. I need an intercept, so I don't have to do anything else. Okay. Output range, I just say that yes, you give me the output here only. Let's just do so that we can copy and or I can copy there also, but let's copy paste here. Okay. Yeah. So this is essentially my regression. So you can say that this R square and as long as R square is not negative, you're fine. Don't really have to worry about R square because this will change. Uh, I mean, depending on what estimation window you are looking at. Okay, so all these numbers are there. Now I can go back to event study worksheet. What is my alpha? Alpha is my intercept equal to, so again, I go to the data, which is intercept, pick up the intercept. Then this is beta. Beta is nothing but the slope. Yeah. Then this is essentially the root mean square error, right? So standard deviation, which is here. Okay, so far I got all the parameters of the estimation. Okay, so these are all coefficients I have got alpha, beta, and I got the standard error. Um, so that then I have a list of actual returns. So that I have already highlighted for you know plus and minus 10 days. So all I do is you know simply copy paste because for, for those days only for event days around the event days in the event window, I have to calculate the abnormal return using the estimation window, right? So estimation window essentially helps us to define a normal performance, right? So this is essentially minus 10 to plus 10. I'm just going to pick up these values. Just paste special because I don't, I have a formula over there, so just values. Right. Okay. Now, estimated return is essentially so we can see that it is all filled up. Yeah. So, estimated return is essentially alpha plus beta times essentially the market return on those days, right? So, with respect to minus 10 is essentially this, right? So, E246 is the market return on the minus 10th day, right? So, okay. So that's my estimated return. Clearly, you can see that, you know, what is estimated is this, but what you saw, um, what the actual return is this. So, there are certain differences, which is fine. Okay, so I'm just going to drag it. So, I'm going to fix this formula. Okay. And right. 
then I calculate the abnormal return, which is simply the difference between actual return and the estimated return. That's your error term, essentially. Okay, now I have the plot over there because that's the template. So you see now all I did was I have just plotted it because I wanted to see how the abnormal return around the event window is acting up. Right. So of course there was a drop, uh, abnormal drop here before the event on looks like on the fifth day prior to the event. Okay. This could be something else or some other announcement. We don't know, but there is no overlapping announcements. Okay. And so you have to be careful that there should not be a lot of important announcements uh, at that point in time. So what you can do is essentially, you know, this could be an indication. You can change your event uh, day to say, you know, this particular day, which is the minus fifth. As in, it looks like that 13 minus five days, right? So around 6th um, or around 6th of uh, March or something. So you can, you can, or maybe before that. So you can, you can change it and you can see, okay? But what I see is uh, essentially what I, what I want to show is this is the kind of, you know, the reaction to the stock price with respect to the event. Now event is here, zero, right? So following the event there was a positive reaction okay but this is temporary positive reaction and that starts dying down right and slowly it reaches the essentially you know the the basically the the normal performance because if everything if the market comes back uh, in the equilibrium in the sense that uh, if the markets are efficient then this information will be eventually incorporated into the prices and the market should not see any abnormal return so the abnormal return essentially dies right so it becomes zero right here it may be we have to check for the significance but it looks like that it is significantly different from zero but then it starts kind of you know uh, uh, dying down right so over a period of time so this is perfectly all right so this is this indicates that there is some initial uh, reaction to the announcement made by the BSC that the stock um, that the Yes Bank will be excluded from all the major indices. Okay. Now to check for the significance, we need to calculate the T value. Now this is only one form, so we uh, we can calculate. We can run a simple kind of you know t test and uh, um, just based on uh, essentially the parametric test. We don't have to worry about the non-parametric at that point in time. But you can actually apply the non-parametric like sign test and rank test you can apply that also but just to give you a simple uh, <coughs> simple way to test it so what's the t value for the uh, uh, t what's the t statistic for um, for the underlying value how do you do that right so what's it what, what's the how do we calculate the t value tell me while I drink, get some water. The value is essentially the test statistic divided by the standard error. Right. So standard error is root mean square error. Right. So that essentially. Okay. So with respect to each day's abnormal return, we calculate the T statistic, okay? Now you can clearly see that on the event day, the abnormal return is not significant, but immediately after the event, it is significant for at least three days, okay? So this is essentially, this is, this is a t-test on the abnormal return. Following up with this, what we do is essentially we calculate the cumulative abnormal return, right? You want to see that whether you know, the abnormal return is essentially this overreaction or underreaction, whatever is there, is kind of, you know, if you accumulate it around 
the event and why do we accumulate it around the event because you know sometimes the anticipation effect also plays a role right so we don't want to have uh, essentially you know the effect that the news might have been expected uh, by the market participants okay it might have been building up over a period of time right over a few days of time so what we do is instead uh, we we essentially uh, along with testing the significance of individual days in the event window abnormal return we also test the significance of cumulative abnormal return okay now for a single stock cumulative abnormal return is essentially calculated as the sum of abnormal return over different event windows okay so here you see the first abnormal the cumulative abnormal return i am calculating is over three days around the event right including the event day which is minus one to plus one including the day of the event okay so the, the total number of days is essentially minus one zero plus one right so three days so what i do is i calculate and i and we also calculate the essentially the the um, the test t value uh, for the uh, the cumulative abnormal return statistic as well to check for its significance now what is what how do we do that let me just first do that okay so plus one to minus one to plus one right so all i have to do is sum of this is nothing but sum of abnormal return over days okay so this is my three days okay so there's a cumulative abnormal data what is the standard deviation so standard deviation again has to be from the estimation window but because you are essentially looking at a, a event window it is essentially the square root of length of the event window times the standard deviation of the abnormal returns so this is essentially already you have the mean square root error times SQRT. The length of the event window is three here. Okay. Then take a division to calculate the these statistics. This is significant, right? So instant reaction around the event uh, is essentially significant okay that is that is quite anticipated and expected that's fairly okay but then we want to also check how far how how quickly it dies down so it doesn't the effect of the information doesn't die down um you know immediately that means in other words the information is not incorporated into the new prices after one day okay so let's take the same thing we do for plus minus five days. You can do it for plus minus two days, plus minus three, plus minus. So these are all standard. You can see when it dies down, right? So plus minus five days. So let's see. So this is essentially we have to. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I'm just going to change. Right. So these are essentially five days. So. So five days prior, right? So eight and five days after. Right? So this is essentially the eleven day window that we have. Eight cell number eight to eighteen. Right. right. So similarly, we can essentially calculate the standard deviation which is essentially the root mean square error times sqrt here the length is 11 days right so 10 plus day of event and then calculate the test statistic this is also significant right the event uh, study uh, so the cumulative abnormal return 
um, that is around the event doesn't die down even now we move on to essentially 10 days so all the all these 10 days times s q r t 21 right now here you have insignificant right so it doesn't expect it uh, from the efficient markets that the effect of the information should not be visible in the form of abnormal return forever okay so eventually abnormal return has to be zero so here you see that the cumulative abnormal return is not significantly different from zero so now the null hypothesis here is um that the cumulative abnormal return is zero right so you for uh, the first two windows you reject the null hypothesis but when you extend the window further so minus 10 cumulative abnormal return minus 10 to plus 10 is essentially you reject the null hypothesis uh, sorry, you, you don't reject the null hypothesis. Cumulative abnormal return is not significantly different from zero. Okay. So these are essentially, you know, this, this is the way that the event study analysis uh, is being done. Now, when you extend this, now there are certain variations. Okay. So you, here I have shown you the simple statistics, like the cumulative abnormal return and, you know, abnormal return. You can have essentially those buy hold abnormal return right so buy and hold abnormal return where you take the product of the return and the expected return right instead of just simply taking a head of you know taking the return as as such right so those are the variations and the updations that you can do and check your results but event study you know is kind of you know this is this is the overall framework of the event study now what are the possible extensions is essentially that you will have a sample consider having a sample of all the forms which have been excluded from the indices right so the major index so let's say you know the bsc's major index is say sensex correct so what you can do is you can say that i want to have a sample of forms who have been excluded from Sensex over a period of time, right? So then you will have N forms and you will have, you know, different event a day with respect to these N forms. But in terms of your setup, it will be the same, right? So whatever you define as zero as the event day, you are going to accumulate it and observe the abnormal return, estimate the abnormal return for around 10 days plus and minus 10 days, right? So you can essentially, you know, further generalize it. That's a sample study. So in the sample study, when you extend this to a sample of forms, instead of having one form, same thing you will repeat for, say, those N forms, okay? And then you will accumulate all the abnormal returns for all these sample forms. Then you will calculate the average abnormal return because it's about the sample then. Right, so you will calculate the average abnormal return and you will calculate the cumulative average abnormal return. Okay. Yes. Wow. So, wow. and you further, you will essentially, you know, calculate the test statistics based on those average numbers because they will be the sample statistic. Okay. So, from one form, you have to essentially move to a sample statistic. Now, these things will be much easier to uh, if you are using a software package like SAS or Stata or R, okay? Because this repetition will become easy. Instead of, you know, me having, say, you know, 100 of Excel files, we usually use the Stata, which is easy and it has a module also. So once you are in that environment, it will help you to, you know, there are standard uh, test, the statistics tests are there, right? So the Patel test is there, rank test is there, sign test is there. 
So it will, it is all in, inbuilt in this data. So you can actually, instead of, you know, me calculating it manually, you actually will be able to run those tests uh, straightforward. Okay, so that's essentially the advantage. But this, this can be easily extend to any, any sample, uh, you know, sample event study analysis. So similarly, you can extend it to, you know, a set of forms where if you are able to identify perfect treatment and control groups, and there is a way to identify treatment and control groups in, in, in econometrics. So if you can apply that, then you will essentially, you know, you will instead of taking the checking the significance uh, from zero, you will essentially check, test for the significance between the difference in the values of cumulative average abnormal return between the treatment or the control sample. Okay, so those are essentially the 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 extension you will have to uh, use when you are uh, transforming this one single form to a sample event study analysis. Okay, so I'm ready to take the questions. Yes, please. And suppose uh, only one announcement. Suppose let's take I have 26 pharmaceutical company. One announcement has takes place uh, that drops as comes for COVID-19. So uh, one announcement takes, so I can I can take for same announcement for the 26 company and can calculate the obvious return. See, now they, they, what you are talking about is, if I'm understanding it correctly, is essentially that you are now considering the announcement with respect to the companies right yes, yes. yes now, so other way around is that will become too cumbersome because those could be now if the, what is that announcement the, uh, the nature of the event is very important you know something which is announced by a company as a, as um kind of you know a reaction to something that is kind of anticipated, right? Now, in the if you are keen on testing the effect of COVID, because I had few questions from the last session also, I can tell you one way to conduct the event study, which is in this COVID related issues, okay? What you can do is, for example, you have, you know, you want to see what, which sector of the economy was, affected more compared to the other sector or less compared to the other sector okay or basically the differential impact of the covid related announcement on different sectors of economy okay so what you can do is essentially you will have sample of forms from pharmaceuticals you will have sample of forms from say manufacturing industry okay the auto manufacturing industry or any other manufacturing industry and then you will have forms from, you know, say chemical industry, you will have forms from IT industry, right? You want to see which one benefited or which one uh, were actually at loss. Now, what is the announcement that the event that you want to consider is, say, the announcement of lockdown, right? Now, what happens is there is an exogenous event that is not in control of these forms. So now how the market will react to essentially this information with respect to, you know, the, the type of forms. For example, the lockdown will have a probably, you know, not so negative effect on the IT industry forms compared to the manufacturing industry form because for manufacturing, the plants will be shut down. Whereas IT, people can still work from home. But uh, the event date will be safe for uh, all the firms. Yes, there you can include all the firms, right? And then simply all the sample, all the li say listed firms you include. And then when you calculate this cumulative abnormal return, you will calculate it across the uh, as an average across the industries and then run a test. You can do all these things. When you are essentially calculating the, you know, the cumulative abnormal return as well as the average abnormal return. So when you are averaging, it is up to you that, you know, across what forms you can average. So this is one way to do the event study. Why? Because the event, the 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 event that you are considering is, it, it should be as exogenous as possible. You know, it should come as a surprise. It should not come as something... 
uh, which the is announcement of drugs also is a very unanticipated event. Yes, so yes, can, uh, that is why we are conducting the event study. If it is anticipated, then you know, then uh, then to it is all part of strategy, right? Now, for example, somebody is asking about the dividend announcement. Now, when you are saying the dividend announcement, if it is a regular dividend announcement, yeah, it is anticipated, but dividends are not announced. Like, you know, the, the dividend announcement that people uh, study in the literature is the special dividend announcements, which are again the anticipated, right? So those dividend announcements are the timing is important. In the corporate finance literature, timing of the dividend is absolutely important, actually. There's a lot, entire literature um, as a part of corporate uh, corporate finance, which talks about when the firms are timing the announcement of their dividends. Okay, so that is why the dividend announcement uh, announcements are uh, kind of one of the important, uh, you know, one of the interest areas for the event study uh, researchers. Okay, because the firms can actually time. Okay, now so what happens is firms can time it, but the investors they don't know right so they are going to react to it so this un this unanticipated effect has to be with respect to the market so market should not perceive it as something you know as a part of the strategy that is what uh you you know the selection of the event is important here that is why if you see my example the market is even though the the yes bank was not doing so well but removing it from the major index is a big news, right? So it was no way it can be anticipated unless the stock exchange themselves, they actually announce it, okay? So that is essentially, you know, the, 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 the kind of announcements that we take. So with respect to dividends, with respect to the lockdown, right? So lockdown came, was imposed, it was imposed essentially, you know, so the announcement you will take is when the lockdown was announced. So the lockdown can be implemented, the first lockdown can be implemented from say, you know, 22nd of March, but the announcement would have come one week before, then you will take that announcement as the event, not when it is actually implemented, because by then to everybody understands that it will be implemented. So the announcement has to be the very first announcement which comes to the market. Is this clear? Yes, ma'am. I have a very basic question, ma'am. Hmm. Can I ask? Now, uh, what is the relevance of pre-event window? Like, uh, I mean, uh, minus 10 to 0, it is as good as, like, nobody is aware of the event. Then what is the relevance of studying that part of the window, ma'am? No, we are not. Uh, we see, that is not, that is used for the accumulation of the abnormal returns okay now because you want to have the effect of you know before and after so why before after is clearly after so some of the studies you will see that their cumulative abnormal return is from you know say zero to five okay you can see you can do that also but why we include the pre-event few days uh, before the event is just in case if you know because there are weekends right so the calendar there are differences between the calendar days and the trading days right so the announcement could have come on friday but the trading will start on say monday right so then you know there is kind of some kind of uh effect or some kind of even anticipation effect you want to just in case the news was leaked in some ways but it is not officially announced but somewhere some some information you know was anticipated so usually it is a good idea so otherwise if you ignore that part of the event window then any abnormality which may arise due to the leakage of the information in the market right um will be ignored so your uh, cumulative abnormal return if you only focus on after events it will be slightly biased Okay, so that's essentially the um, uh, the the perception. Okay, that's why we we kind of you know accumulate it around the event. Okay, so both and you want to kind of you know you want to see that you know whether it was same before and same after then it will get cancelled out, right? So you you want to take into account all all sorts of things. So because you want to make sure that it is purely because of the event. Right, so any spike, both negative or the positive side, 
has to be it is it is you know it is residual of what has happened before the event so that is why you know immediately before the event let's say that so that is essentially yes ma'am yes ma'am thank you yeah that's the uh, reason that we accumulate it like that yes next question please excuse I me ma'am hmm. can yes, i please? yeah Yes, ma'am, what about investors? Can we see that, uh, you know, in how the investors are behaving on particular announcement? Maybe the this foreign investors or... Absolutely, you are absolutely, you, you, you have absolutely nailed uh, the event study methodology. This is, when I say market reaction, this is nothing but the investor reaction. Who is trading in the market? Yes, so yes. So, if... Okay. If if the yes bank was removed from the uh, from the major indices, right? So people who are holding the stocks, right? Analysts yes. will immediately revise their prediction, say sell, 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 right? So people will start selling. Yes. So okay. These are the investors who are reacting. Maybe like foreign investors or domestic investors, DIs or no, FIs. No, can we? Not, no, that is not. No, that is not. Okay the part of the event study analysis you yes, cannot right. differentiate no no you cannot differentiate okay. because all you observe is prices and prices yes. is an outcome of trading by all the investors that there, there is no behavioral issues that we include in the event study methodology yet okay so okay. Uh, there are assumptions the, yes. assuming that everybody is rational here okay so and and the markets are efficient so mark when we impose this mar markets are efficient then you know because then even though there are some investors who are informed who are not informed some are just you know uh, e exercising the herding behavior they are all yes. part of yes. this so yes. everybody yes. everybody is there yeah okay oh, okay ma'am thank you thank you so much ma'am hello Yes, please. Ma'am, I have a small doubt. That is, yeah, uh, sure. if two simultaneous news comes into the picture, like what happened with Adani in today's mm. morning time, like mm. Adani reported a huge profit. Simultaneously, there was a, um, um, a, a particular information which was circulating in the market with regard to delisting of Adani. Mm. So when two, two simultaneous news came into the market, the, the, the stock price started neutralizing. Initially, it was started to going up. At some point of time, it started to come down as such. So, will it be possible for us to go ahead with event study for this 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 scenario? You have to you have to take into account of the event clustering, okay? Because okay, then, if these events are if these events are very close, then event study is not fit. First of all, why? Because you cannot differentiate whether the market is reacting to the first news or the follow-up news okay the whole idea of the event study is how the market is reacting with respect to a particular news okay so we are bigger independent news yes so there you have to uh, you have to be careful about overlapping news okay event clustering is when there are you know the say you know the same type of event is happening say multiple times then all the that you can take into account by the clustering okay but here these are overlapping one and particularly one is negative in nature and one is positive in nature you should not include these two events together okay your clear results will be misleading clear ma'am clear ma'am so we'll have a bias bias result misleading i i would say misleading okay ma'am okay uh, this is prasad here hello yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, with respect to the dividend thing, I have my own opinion. Uh, can I share it? Uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, one thing is we uh, when the expectation of a dividend is met and uh, the company performs similar to the market expectation, then probably uh, the event study methodology there we cannot apply it. But on the other side, uh, where it is very uh, it is beyond the market expectation, or it if it uh, if a company doesn't meet the market expectation. Then, then automatically there is some uh, differences in the prices. Then we can see the effect, which has been there. And the next, now this is about my opinion about these dividend things. Now the second thing is uh, the, about the two events. Now the thing is, uh, to what extent the effect can be seen after a particular event? Uh, for example, uh, it again depends upon the uh, uh, 
uh, what do you say the capacity or the deviation from that uh, expected news so if it is nearer to the expected news means automatically there will be uh, too little to react if they are already discounted then automatically it has only little thing to react and uh, uh, it will uh, react to the latest uh, recent news now then uh, for example this pradhan is profit and uh, uh, delisting now delisting become more uh, has a more weight compared to the profit because people do not know when it will again get released yet so uh, can i interrupt much. yeah i understand yeah. what you're saying but the thing is here see what when we talk about the news or the event right so there is a difference so in the event study the we are not talking about the market reaction to the the news that is floating around there could be hundreds of news that are floating around correct, correct. but there has to be an announcement which is you know which will essentially change the course of the market right so that announcement has to have from the news so here is an events study methodology it is not a news methodology so there could be hundreds of things going on but which one is so profit is going up so that is not an announcement that is you know that is a news the the, the adani should be delisted uh, can be delisted that is still the news so i wouldn't even consider that as a part of my event study analysis right it has to be it has to be announced in the market either from the firm side or from exogenous to the firm right so like for example based on these news and building up of the news nothing is going to happen because if the regulator is not going to do anything right or even the firm is not going to do anything so they, these news are you know when because the fundamental of the event study analysis is that if the markets are efficient then the information that will be processed by the investors will be exactly in the same way right whether it's a private information or a public information because there are some investors who may have private information who may have positive, public information who may have both as well so this gets cancelled out anyways right so that is why we when we observe the prices and the prices already incorporate these kind of you know news reactions okay now the kind of reaction that we want to focus on the in the event study is the major announcements like you know if the suppose you know the the board of the uh, uh, adani group uh, says that you know the essentially gautam adani will be uh, kind of you know will have to leave the, um, the essentially the the position right so the post now that is essentially the announcement right because there is a structural change at the company level now to that there is you know there will be the market reaction which will be captured into essentially you know significant abnormal returns but not with respect to you know news which comes there are, could be 100 news which will come simultaneously in the market right so for that prices are anyway going to change so event study is not about why prices going up or down no that is not about it it is about essentially with respect to a with respect to an announcement which is expected to essentially affect the long term valuation of the firm right or the equilibrium valuation of the firm whether the market presents any reaction to that or if the markets are efficient then we should not even see any abnormal return immediately then the next price that the next trading price should incorporate it immediately but that doesn't happen right there is a lag so that is where the event study comes so market will come back to normal but how quickly it comes back to normal is essentially the point okay so these news that we are talking and discussing here they are already getting incorporated so if each and every news which is coming every second that is not the event study so we cannot go so high frequency in the event study that's not the purpose of the event study so a caution has to be exercised when you consider applying the event study analysis ma'am now for example the rating downgrade or rating upgrade is an announcement it's concrete right it's it's not you know a coverage of the news but it is actually it has been it will affect 
the firm's reliability when it goes to raise money from the market, right? So that's that's an important announcement because it will have an the effect on the uh, structural uh, at the structural level actually. Yeah, ma'am. Ma uh, this is Nikhil. Uh, ma'am, I have a question again. That is regarding um, when media reported about FIA investment, about Adani company's investment, uh, it was a news as such. But when that particular news came in, the stock price had fall, fallen almost 30 percentage immediately mm. when the news came in. Then after three days, NSDL responded to that particular scenario. Mm. After which again, 50 percent decline was reported. I mean, say 40 to 50 percent decline was reported. But the initial falling was was purely based upon the news which was available in the market. But that was a standalone news, right? So that was the standalone information, right? So there was no overlapping as in the, you know, the overlapping is in the sense of reverse news. I mean, the, the different set of news are not coming like on the single day or like one, two days apart, right? But, but ma'am, uh, earlier you said like we should not consider news information. We should take only those structures. See, news, okay, media news and the, so that the nature of the news is important, right? So usually the news has to have, you know, and then you should justify, okay? Then the, when, if you're calling that news as an event, then you should justify that, you know, why that event just by looking at the essentially the decline in the price. Yes, it declined. The, the stock prices declined, you know, say 30 percent or more than 30 percent. Yes. Then you go back and say that, you know, what was the nature and the, what was the context of that news that would have affected. Now, if it is theoretically justified, then you can use it. Right. If it has, it is related to why that news came, right? So if it is related to certain, you know, certain uh, workings of the form, then it becomes an event. So news that is gets classified as an event is essentially important point that you have to pay attention to. Now, if you say that around that time it came all of a sudden, that news that was a completely a uh, surprise uh news in the market yeah then it becomes an event that you know what was driving it right so suddenly something would have happened that would have driven that news that that you have to justify at one point but there has to be theoretical justification right so that that is what i'm i'm essentially emphasizing on so rather than conducting event study with respect to each and every news the caution has to be exercised with respect to specific events that may that will have a long term effect on the firm's performance as well. Okay. And in general, on the markets as well, right? That is where the event study you have to place it. Why this is an important uh, topic, right? So, for example, with respect to even again, if I go back to Yes Bank, there are many announcements, right? The essentially, the the CEO was essentially replaced by RBI. The board was taken over by RBI. So these are all part of news, and these are all important important events. But because that has a larger, you know, that is part of a disciplining the essentially the form so if you have such type of events right if that comes as a news then it is justified but all i'm saying is that you know that should not be a kind of you know just a news announcement which is coming in the media which is floating in the media okay there has to be a reliable source for the for the news and uh, suppose it is coming from, you know, if some, some uh, you know, large investor is selling, that becomes a news. Yes, that becomes an event also because it, it will affect the behavior of the investors in the market, right? So, so ma'am, you're saying, like, you saying like we should not consider opinions, but concrete news can be considered. Yes, of course. Clear, ma'am. Clear, ma'am. Thank you. Hello, madam. Yes, I want to respond to just sorry. Yeah, I am coming to you, but I want to also respond to uh, the question from Ms. Urvashi Sahitya. 
um, event study, is event study a good tool for analyzing credit ratings? Of course. So any downgrade, upgrade announcements, you can conduct an event study analysis. Yes, because it doesn't happen frequently, right? So yes. Change in the credit rating is definitely you can conduct a uh, event study analysis. Yes, uh, Shantanu Ghosh, please. Uh, uh, in the previous class, you mentioned that uh, the cumulative abnormal returns uh, is uh, somehow uh, used in uh, short horizons, analysis of event study in short horizons. Uh, but, ma'am, uh, uh, what if, if we are using uh in short horizons the bhar model also ah they will they will be similar so for short horizons if you use the buy and hold uh, abnormal return or you use the cumulative abnormal returns your uh, returns your uh, results will be fairly uh, similar so that's that's essentially no no issues about the short horizon but with respect to the long horizons there will be a problem if you continue to use the car that was the point. Okay, ma'am. And ma'am, secondly, I wanted to know that uh, in the uh, results that uh, you obtained, that uh, in a five day and the three day horizons that you considered as the mm. event window, in uh, those cases, the T values were significant. Can mm. we uh, uh, interpret uh, and uh, conclude in the sense that uh, on the speed of adjustment regarding the efficiency in the market? Uh, yeah, so that is one one of the things that event studies are being used for that, you know, how quickly the information uh, is incorporated. So, you know, whether it is uh, five days, 10 days, 20 days like that. Yes. So speed of uh, incorporating the information into the stock prices. It is also a test for market efficiency. You are absolutely right. Yes. Event study is a common tool to test for market efficiency. Yes. Because market efficiency essentially implies that any information should be instantaneously incorporated, right? But when you see abnormal returns for 10 days, 11 days, then yes, clearly the, uh, the you know, clearly there is, a, you know, there is a short term uh, gain, but it should die down. Then the UK, then it will be same thing that the markets are efficient. That is why the abnormal return will eventually be uh, zero. Yes, that is the, that's the point. So the short term overreaction is absolutely OK, even in the um, uh, market efficiency. So market efficiency doesn't uh, doesn't say that there will not be any short term reaction uh, by the market. OK, so that is all perfectly fine. So as long as it, it, it comes back to its new equilibrium and the abnormal return eventually becomes zero. Right. So you can find abnormal return significantly different from zero, but eventually it has to become zero. That is the whole point. So it provides a test for market efficiency. Then you extend, you keep extending the essentially, you know, 10 days and then beyond that. So yes, um, but then you have to be careful beyond 10 days. We don't exceed because then we'll, there will be some new information, right? Other news. Ma'am, yeah, in our results, we got that in the 10 days, the T statistic was, was insignificant, but mm. if it had been significant, then uh, we can yes. say that efficiency is not that much. That means the speed not is not that, that much. We don't use that like that. Yes. Yeah. So the markets are, you know, ma, ma, um, the okay. markets are not so the, the market efficiency is rejected, basically. Yes. You say that. Okay, ma'am. Yes. But then, you know, with respect to one stock here again, one caution. Okay. With respect to one stock, we cannot say then you have to conduct this on a on a large yeah. sample. Then you will say, right, one stock, this is only this is only with respect. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So with respect to one stock, never say all these things, but with respect to a sample, which is random sample, then you can yes you can say so the typical studies uh, event uh, study methodology which test provide a test for market efficiency are based on essentially which talks uh, which uses the sample of you know mergers and acquisitions dividend announcements earnings announcements because then you will have a very large sample all the firms have to do right so th these are all very large sample then you can actually draw implications on the market efficiency 
and ma'am in that case uh, we should consider a change or an event that uh, impacts all the farm simultaneously isn't that because maybe in a farm there is announcement that, that announcement may not affect the other farm in the same industry in the same way no so in, that is not required because you are calculating abnormal return with respect to event whatever it is as long as it is there in the sample so that announcement so the if it is a firm specific announcement then you don't have to worry about if it is a common announcement then and then naturally there will be only one one uh, single point of time or couple of uh, times right so that is okay if, for example mergers and acquisition so there could be you know a merger on different uh, dates for two firms so that is perfectly fine as long as uh, they are not, uh, you know, so overlapping. So the, the, the two firms, like if you are having an acquiring firm sample, then two acquiring firms should not uh, be engaged into, you know, two mergers which are close enough. So you have to just worry about that. Otherwise, it is okay because all the accumulation is happening with respect to zero. So that way, event study is very simple. You don't have to worry about, you know, overlapping is something that you will have to worry about so that the, the two firms can have same day event that is fine that is absolutely fine because you are looking at with respect to that particular event so that is not a problem in the event study analysis so when we say overlapping means there could not be you know five six news in the same uh, you know events in the same event window that you are defining or even in estimation window so if you your if you have multiple events in the estimation window then you cannot estimate the normal performance so that is primarily important when you conduct the event study analysis okay ma'am thank you yes you can actually stick to a macroeconomic uh, variable announcement that will be easier compared to like you know the covid example that i gave so the announcement of lockdown and it affecting different sectors right so there is already a paper on india as well as china uh, which have which have actually looked into this so i was reading that paper in the morning so that's very interesting paper so you can actually look at it and then you can draw that yes when there is a when there is a you know there is a crisis yes markets will deviate from the efficiency that's expected and that's exactly you should see so with respect to financial crisis you will of 2008 you will see that the markets deviated from efficiency so yes then the event study will actually tell you that yes markets deviated but that is only because of those crisis like situation eventually yes so that's that's kind of you know the 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 nature of the study that we take so when we do the market efficiency test then it has to be you know like as simple as the announcement like mergers and acquisitions because these are all announcements these are not crisis like situation where you know the entire market will be disrupted so this is like a normal announcement right so uh, change in the boards they are all kind of no normal events so if the markets are efficient the market should absorb this information eventually right and the new equilibrium has to come so that's market efficiency so if you see that you know for for a very long time the abnormal return stays then there is a problem with respect to market efficiency ma'am okay. uh, sometimes you want to see the, the abnormal performance with the, by creating a panel so how can we do Suppose you can calculate abnormal return for a particular company at a particular point of time, but uh, different point of time we cannot compute now. No, no, we are that is a time series only. So you are calculating abnormal return on all the event uh, window days. Mm -hmm. So that is that is the time series, yeah. And then you are accumulating it. So the abnormal uh, return is calculated on every day. To create a panel. So how can we it is a panel. panel it is it is a panel so when you conduct so i have yes bank you can have you know the other one you can have lakshmi vilas bank which was you know which was essentially which was asked by sbi to but be that taken is at a point of time ma'am that is at a point of time suppose 
Uh, that is fine. That is what I am trying to make uh, make a point here. You are absolutely fine that when you are asking this. But remember, the abnormal returns are calculated with respect to a pointer which is zero. So for every form, you will have a zero. You will have for every form, you will have minus one. For every form, you will have minus ten. So now, when you have a data, you will have data in terms of dates. But when you transform the data for event study, you will have only 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Then you will write a command that accumulate the abnormal returns for say, you know, minus 5 to plus 5. Then for every form with respect to 0 that will get accumulated. So it doesn't matter that what date is having with respect to the announcement you are calculating, right? So that is fine. I understand. Suppose I got a company expense abnormal return for let's take uh, for a particular point of time. Let's take uh, but I want to create a panel for uh, 20 banking firms. Uh, their abnormal performance so with uh, the other characteristics, sales, sales, uh, size, control or liquidity. Can we make a panel? It's not possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a very good question. Yes. Because then your uh, your dependent variable will be cumulative abnormal return. So C-A-R-I-T, okay? For that particular, say if you are running an annual analysis for that particular year, you will observe with respect to a particular event, you that is most likely that will be average C-A-R and you have to make some adjustment. Then on the right hand side, among the independent variable, you will have the bank form level characteristics. But, that but is fine. Uh, for panel every year, I cannot create a cumulative abnormal performance. Ma'am, that, that is you can only create if you have yes, yes. Ma'am, can I have this? Uh, some uh, some I have some inputs on this. Actually, yes. uh, the I I think sir is telling that there will be a fifty. Companies and there will be a fifty events, different different events. Mm, yes. Is it is it that, that I already answered? That yeah. I already answered. So that you can have different events, but with respect to each event, you will have calculation of abnormal return. So abnormal return calculation is happening with respect to each event. Each now, event. if a form has multiple events, then you will have multiple abnormal returns. So suppose you are saying that I am looking at a common event of earnings announcement every year. Yes, you will have cumulative abnormal return around the event uh, announcement, earnings announcement every year. Then you will have form specific characteristics, whether you know that form is listed form, that is non-listed form, that has, you know, uh, you know that, that is in particular industry. Yes, so you get a, essentially a panel data. Because it but will vary. Merger and acquisition I cannot get, but that is on a particular date. I got the announcement and I got cumulative of average abnormal data. But for different part of time, I cannot compute now. You can, you can. That is what I'm saying. You can. Because, for example, that is why I'm giving you an example of earnings management. That, uh, sorry, earnings announcement. Earnings announcement is happening in every uh, every year. So you say that, yes. you know, then you will have abnormal return every year. So it's a panel. Uh, but for merger and acquisition, it may happen in 2008, it may happen in 2021. So that, that, that point of time, you cannot take uh, uh, every year panel, I cannot take. Sir, actually, you can do it, sir. By in uh, in the in, uh, individual Excel sheet, you can do it. Uh, you are, I think, you are telling that your zero event must be come in the same line of all the sheets. Is it right, sir? No, ma'am. Very simple. Suppose if in fifth January when an event has happened, I calculate yeah. the cumulative abnormal return of let's take S Bank 10th March 2000. I got a cumulative abnormal return of, of that 2020. Suppose I wanted a panel data from 2015 to 2020. I have taken one event of 2020. Now I don't have an event uh, on 2019 or 18. So where I can create a panel? Yes. Okay. So what yes. is your then? Then I would rather ask a question that why do you even want a panel when you can run a cross section? 
transactional analysis. That's then you don't need a panel. Why? I mean, panel has to be justified, right? Your your basic research question has to be properly placed. Then only yes. you will use the panel data. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Understand. Then the cross-sectional, there are a lot of cross-sectional studies using the event study analysis. You are perfectly, you're already kind of, you know, uh, I'm happy that, you know, this with the discussion actually. So everybody is able to, you know, actually take it to the next level. That's wonderful. So you can actually do a so very I, good cross-sectional analysis. I do completed my event study. I used, uh, I have taken 449 companies. I calculate abnormal return. I do all the factors I study. So the next challenge is I am not able to form a panel. Sometimes I see the research paper, but I am not able to. So you now the idea is clear. If it's not needed, then how can we form a panel? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. In in economics, we have to first justify the research question, right? So mm -hmm. that's important. Yeah. Okay. So I thank I you, hope. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much for all the questions and I feel that it was very lively session and uh, I hope that I have imparted uh, some of the, uh, you know, understanding of the event study uh, methodology to my audience and uh, would be happy to, you know, be in touch and have any questions if you want and uh, look forward to have a lot of, read a lot of papers published using event study analysis. Um, so I look forward to reading papers from all of you, actually. Uh, thanks a lot, madam. Thank you. Uh, thank you to Dr. Biju, yes, for giving me this uh, great uh, opportunity yeah. to interact uh, with everyone. It was a wonderful yeah. session. Uh, two sessions were, uh, were awesome. Actually, the participants were enjoyed, uh, and they have a value addition over this. Uh, at the outset, I uh, invite uh, Nikhil uh, from Rajagiri Institute of Social Science Coaching to propose form a lot of thanks to me. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, yes, audible. Yeah, um, it, it was a fabulous session, ma'am. Uh, I would like to extend uh, a sincere gratitude towards you just because of the reason that uh, you were able to make a clear cut understanding about. A critical framework on what exactly the event study would be and uh, I was really happy to understand uh, that the courtesy which I had shown while explaining about uh, how to compute this event study in a systematic way. I could understand uh, uh, you had clearly explained how we can implement this particular event study in a critical way to evaluate how the stock would be performing in the open market just because of the information which is available in the market. Um, I, I appreciate the organizers to uh, to select this particular topic as part of this particular uh, discussion forum as part of the workshop. Uh, and on behalf of all the participants and uh, the program organizers, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to Dr. Ekta, who is currently serving as Associate Professor, Madras School of, so uh, School of Economics. And um, I do appreciate your commitment with regard to clarifying the doubts. Uh, I would say we had two sessions. One was purely based upon theoretical framework. Second one was purely based upon hands-on experience. And, 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 and whenever we were asking questions by interrupting you, you were ready to give up your best, best clarifications for the same. And, and, and this was a new topic for me. Uh, simultaneously, it could be a new topic for many other people. Uh, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to Ekta Ma'am and uh, the organizers of this particular event uh, for making this particular workshop a grand success. Thank you all. And uh, thank, uh, thanks to Biju sir and the coordinating team. And uh, I wish uh, we should take this particular workshop to the next level in the upcoming, upcoming uh, time scenario as such. Thank you all. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Nikhil. And thank you, madam, uh, for the wonderful session. So yeah, we thank will you, uh, have more sessions with ma'am later. OK, thank you, participants. Thank you, ma'am. And we will have a break uh, of uh, 10 minutes, and we will uh, meet again. I mean, uh, we will uh, come back after tea break, uh, 3.50, 3.50. 3.50, the Simon's are uh, Gabriel Simon's third session uh, will be continued, and uh, uh, he will conclude the uh, yesterday's uh, cases and uh, practice sessions of applied research and finance.